I'll give it. A, yeah, we'll give it a second here until everybody can log in. Go ahead. Want to start? No, no, I know. No. Oh. Did you let it go? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, but yeah, just just to close that thought though, you can you can represent both sides. You know, is it? I understand from a business perspective though. You're like, yeah, how do you do that? Legally, how do you do that? But they just do it so the brokers can facilitate the deal and and then put both sides together as opposed to just doing one side or the other. But you will get people that will ask you, especially the more savvy clients, that will ask you to be a single agent, which is okay too. As long as you're not a dual agent, that's the only thing you can't do here in Florida. So. All right, man. You ready to do some role playing with me? Ready to do some role playing. <laughs> so, you know, last week we went over a little bit about for sale by owners. I talked more about open houses and kind of what the script dialogue is required there. Today, I really want to get into what exactly, you know, what particular scripts and what language you should be using for these first four to five categories. So, the reason why I wrote these up on the board for sale by owners, open houses, expired listings, and buyers is because those, those are gonna be your, your easiest barrier to entry. So there's, there's really no limits on how many of these you can contact, uh, financially or physically. You should be able to access as many for sale by owners as, as they're available, do as many open houses as you physically can, hit as many expired listings as possible, and in, in turn, uh, come across as many buyer, buyers as possible, okay? And all of these, I, I like to call them relationships, right? And I'm, really, I'm actually reading a really good book right now that's called The Go-Giver. Anybody ever read that book before? It's really good. So instead of the go-getter, it's the go-giver. So it talks about how to build value and, and focus instead on the actual relationship than the dollar behind the relationship. And by, by nurture there, the, the dollar comes along, which is kind of, you know, seems a little fluffy if you think about it from a 30,000 foot view. But when you really get into the nitty gritty, this guy that, that actually preaches that and practices, he's a multi-billionaire. Um, you know, it makes a lot of sense, kind of his approach to it. But I recommend that book if you guys are if you guys are readers. I I do um, Audible, which is an app, because I can't sit there and read and, and, and do that. I'm better, you know. I'll go to the gym and I'll pop my my headphones in and I'll knock out an hour's worth of a workout and get the education at once. It just works better for my lifestyle. But if you guys rather have the book, obviously they have the printed version as well. But uh, anyway, so when you guys start prospecting these for sale by owners, we'll start talking about for sale by owners first. It's important that you come across on the phone in the way that, that you need to, for, first and foremost, so you're not crossing any, any do not call uh, registry boundaries there. So they're, they're very strict on, on if somebody's on the do not call list. It doesn't mean you can't call them for whatever reason, it just means you can't solicit them, right? Mm -hmm. And the script is built in such a way that you're not actually soliciting anybody, you're just simply asking if their house is for sale, and if so, can I come see it? That's really all it is. That's not a solicitation. That's, they've already subjected their contact information in the public. Therefore, their do not call registry laws that they, they like to think about are no longer uh, valid in this scenario. But, but you obviously, to be nice, I'm not gonna say that to them, instead I'm just gonna tweak my approach a little bit. But um, this, is, this is exactly how I build my business with for sale by owners. A lot of people uh, you know, say it might not work, There's, you know, they're always getting hounded by realtors, but at the same time, they're gonna go with the person that contacted them first and contacted them last, or the one that did it the most. And I, that was always me, I, always, I never let them off the hook, I followed up relentlessly every week. But that all starts with the relationship. So um, Kevin's gonna help me, you're gonna actually represent the seller, okay? So if you wanna stand up, actually. Um, and then as I go through my first line, then you just, obviously you can ask me some of these questions, but you already know, you contacted them before. Um, what happened? I mean, I already know the script by heart, I was just more or less showing you guys. Um, this is available on Ways by Waterfront. If you go under the resources tab, there's a little tab that says scripts. You can log into this, and we're gonna go over a few of these today, but I always suggest that you guys tweak and practice this on your own, and then create your own script, right? You wanna sound natural. That's the most important part about cold calling or, or reaching somebody over the phone, or even you know having a conversation in real life. You wanna have your own approach as opposed to try somebody else's, because then it sounds forced, and then you blow the sale right there, right? People pick up on that subconsciously, okay? So whenever I call, I'm always very upbeat. That's that's my number one thing is that I like Jordan Belfort, like his training is sharp as a tack, enthusiastic as hell, and a force to be reckoned with, right? So I try to emulate that over the phone uh, within the first like half second, right? So when I call and they say, you know, hello, I'm like, hey, uh, my name's Kyle. I happen to see your ad on wherever you saw, right? We're just gonna use Zillow as an example. So Zillow, and I wanna know, is, is your home actually still available for sale? Yes. Great. Um, so the two things are gonna happen here. I just wanna step out of the script for a second. They're gonna ask you, are you a realtor right off the bat? Some may, that are getting a lot of these calls, and others will just say yes, you know, the home is still available. I'm gonna take you through both scenarios. 
but the first one is going to be if yes, okay? So I say, hey, good. Um, is it pretty easy to show the house, or do you need extended notice? Uh, I, it's pretty easy to show. I'd be happy to take, have you take a look at it today. Okay, great. Uh, the reason why I ask is I actually work for a local real estate company, Waterfront Realty Group. I know you're getting a bunch of these calls probably from real estate agents all across trying to list your house. I just want to uh, upfront say that's not what I'm trying to do. I actually work extensively with for sale buy owners to help them find buyers, right? Are you willing to pay a buyer's commission in the event that I bring you a buyer? Not a listing commission, not 6%, but 3% or, you know, whatever we can negotiate if the deal makes sense. I'd be open to the idea, but you know, do you have anybody that's interested at this time? Yeah, so absolutely. So the, the way my company works is we have listings all across Naples, Southwest Florida, Bonita Springs, and Stero. So we've actually done business in Europe before, and in our database, we still have buyers that are looking around in that area. So the, the, what my broker likes for me to do, or what I like to do the way I run my business, is I'll preview properties before actually showing it to my client. The reason why I do that is number one, I don't want to waste your time. time. Number two, I don't want to waste theirs and mine as well in the event that your house may look a certain way via pictures or you may describe it a certain way but to actually be inside and feel the house is a completely different scenario wouldn't you agree with that yeah i can agree with that but honestly i'm only open to anybody who's actually got a serious buyer if they bring them by absolutely and, and a serious buyer I, I absolutely come across them all day every day i do open houses every single week i'm contacting many other for sale buyers such as you today but a simple measure is i just don't want to take the risk of showing somebody a house that I haven't seen. And here's the deal, it's only gonna take me 10 minutes, you're gonna run me through it as if I was a buyer. That way, when I bring my buyer back, I already know the product. And number one rule about sales is you have to know your product, right? So I may better able to sell, serve you and sell them on your property if in fact they like it. Well, yeah, I'd be happy for you to come back and see it. I just wanna let you know I'm not open to signing anything today. So. No, that, that's, that's quite fine. All I wanna do is check out the property. Uh, you know, it'll take me 15 minutes. What works better, this afternoon or tomorrow morning? Um, tomorrow will work better. Okay, absolutely. And then obviously from there, you just nail down the time. I always get their email address um, and then just say, hey, I'm going to send you a quick email with my credentials so you know who you're dealing with, my YouTube channel, my website, whatever it is that you want to send them, and I'll see you tomorrow at night. And, and it's that easy, okay? So I didn't, two things I eliminated from that is listing, right? Because that's what all the, the agents are calling us to list the property. And, and two is time element. It's only going to take me 15 minutes. And it's true, right? If they want to make it longer, if they start talking to me, and we start going over a couple different stuff, yeah, then that's on their that's on their time. I always allot about an hour for these appointments between travel time. If it's further away, then obviously I, um, I adjust for the uh, driving time, especially during season, you guys know it gets a little crazy out there. Uh, but I always have plenty of time with them, so in the event that they wanna start chatting about, you know, hey, what's the market doing? I have a whole process that I take them through once I actually see them, and once we, once we have that interaction. But, but your your job, really what you're starting off is just setting up that appointment, right? Because then you could take me, you could take Kevin, you could take one of the mentors and we'll go with you and we'll show you how we massage the sale along and get them. I don't actually force them into the listing. I, re I make them realize that they need to list the property, right? That's the most powerful well way of selling somebody is make them realize that they need it. Not so much me telling, hey, you have to list the property, otherwise you're never going to sell it, right? That, that kind of goes without saying, but I show them enough data Right, I'll take them through a CMA, show them what's selling out there, what's pending, what's active, all the activity that they're missing out on at this time because they're not actively on the market, as I put it. Uh, and then from there, it becomes a much easier conversation because I've, I've, proof is in the pudding, right? And then I take them through my marketing plan and so on and so forth. But the relationship at first starts with just me going in the house and setting up that preview, okay? Does that make sense for, for you guys? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, any questions so far on that part of the script? So you move them from just wanting to see the house because you may have a potential buyer mm -hmm. to eventually, uh, hopefully, talking them into listing. Correct. At yep. that point, your the commission goes up back up to six percent. Back up to six, yeah. Because I say you're only paying me three yeah. percent, but if I bring another, if another broker brings a buyer, we'll have to compensate them mm -hmm. as well. So if you, they try to knock me on commission, I'll say, hey, I, I appreciate what you're saying going from six to five or to four, but the problem is I'll have to cut their end as well. And a lot of these agents can't show property under a certain percentage point, their broker won't let them, or they're simply not interested in showing something that's gonna make them less money. Um, you know, because it's their career too, their full-time career. That's gonna be the, the hardest thing to do because the reason they're FISBO usually is because, because they're, they're trying to save a buck. Yeah. Correct, yeah, that 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 will, that 99% of the time that's gonna be the number one thing, I don't wanna pay the full 6% commission, right? And I understand, from there, my, my pitch becomes just building the value and showing them that it's worth paying the 6%, not only for my services, but for bringing the other brokers in as well, right? And then if, if it's a matter of them having to hit 
very tight margin because they have a mortgage and they're pretty much maxed out at what they're listing it at before going over market value, then we have to have a different conversation about potentially you know, talking to some more investor-driven clients that are willing to pay my end of the commission, so on and so forth. But it really just depends on the, uh, on the tactic there. And on, every property is different, every person is different. So that's, you know, you go out there to fact find, right? If I can provide any value to that, with, uh, with all the physical calls that I've made, not just as an agent, but also in my current position, uh, a lot of what I get, because that's really my job, is I'm just scheduling buyer previews all day long. I'm not really trying to schedule a listing appointment, because if I try to do that, I'm not gonna get any. So where I've been successful is I call them and say, hey, I've got an agent that wants to call on out, we wanna take a look at it. We've got some buyers interested in a property just like yours, and so we just wanna get a bird's eye view of what you're looking at. Um, one of the stats that prove very valuable and you know just being in real estate uh it's that you know as a fisbo if you sell your home you're going to lose x amount of money on top of that as far as the percentage goes is, what, isn't there a stat like the average percentage uh, if you list with an agent versus selling yeah agent? yeah so it's it's called the list price to sale price ratio so when you list with an agent uh these are nar statistics right you're usually at about a 95 percent clip uh, for sale by owner statistically from their asking to their close price is at 82 percent so there you see there's plenty of room for commission there right it's because they Facebook's don't understand if, if you have a full-time job blue collar go nine to five and you know your job very well but you don't understand how to sell a house nor do you have the time to really learn how to sell the house then you're going to take shortcuts or you're going to make mistakes it's bound to happen and those mistakes are going to translate into your bottom net profit and you're going to lose profit there from all the mistakes that you're making especially when you, in, uh, you introduce the element of time, right? People don't realize like, oh yeah, I know I, I can sell it myself, it might take me a little longer, well great. You know, if it takes you a little longer, let's think about all those months of extra expenses that you're incurring. If I can sell it in two months, but you can't sell it for another eight months, what's that extra six months worth to you as far as monthly expenses, right? That could be a down payment on a home, on a different house, right? So I always try to just rationalize and put a logic case behind uh, airtight logic argument, as I call it, behind why it is that, that you need to be listing the house instead of trying to for sale on there. Now, of course, it's not going to work with every single person you go out there and say, yes, there are for sale buyers that, that do sell it themselves, but at the same time, the percentages are stacked on our favor, right? 75% of all for sale by owners end up listing with an agent. So, that, I mean, that's three out of four. That's a huge percentage. So, that I know that I have at least a 75% chance to get in front of somebody and they're gonna to wanna to list their house, I just need it to be with me, right? That's the myth, the best argument that I can have on that. Some other stuff that you may run into, um, you know, but going back to the beginning of the script is they're, they're gonna ask you right about, hey, are you a realtor, right? Because I've been getting a bunch of you guys calling me. And I say, yeah, actually I am. Uh, but myself and my company, like I told you guys before, do a lot of business in your area. We've sold homes right down the street from you and still have clientele looking to live in your neighborhood. So that's, it's because of our, the size of our company, how long we've been around the area. That's true for any, basically any neighborhood that you could think of short of a new construction, even a new construction, we've already had sales, okay? Um, so if you're open to paying a negotiable buyer's commission, I may be able to bring some traffic to your doorstep. Again, I can't do that without seeing the property first. So let's set up an appointment, 15 minutes, what works best for you this time or that time. Okay, and then again, we I always try to keep the commission discussion really short over the phone because I'm not trying to negotiate a commission up front or on the phone. You're always going to lose if you try to do it on the phone. You want to try to do that at the kitchen table when they're ready to sign a listing agreement. That's when you talk about numbers. Okay, so I say we're negotiable. The angle is to simply take care of you and my clients. We can discuss figures once I meet you in person. If that's okay with you, you give them another incentive to meet with you. We can talk numbers then. Okay. Um, you will get push, pushback from, from about half of the people you talk to. Just be ready for that, okay? It's not gonna be a slam dunk every time. Sometimes you'll have really easy calls where you basically run through the first part of the script. They're like, yeah, sure, come on by, anytime works. And that'll be an easy one. And then you'll get the pushback, right? If they say, uh, you know what? Um, I don't have the margins. I don't wanna pay the other side of the commission. Um, or I don't, I don't wanna list my property, whatever the case may be. I always try to be an understandable person, right? Like the agreeable person. I understand, right? You want to make, or I'm sorry, you want to save as much money as possible. I'm not trying to take up your listing. Most buyers these days use real estate agents for representation and paperwork, which is true. About 92% of buyers are using a real estate agent to represent them. Why? Because it's free for buyers to use a real estate agent. They don't need to pay them. They get to show, you know, they get chauffeured around town all day. Um, people are, are, are explaining how the process works and it doesn't cost them a nickel, right? So I explain that to for sale buyers. This is how it works in our industry. All buyers basically are using agents because it doesn't cost them a dime, right? Uh, and plus they want to be represented and want to make sure they have the right paperwork. Uh, I know I can get you, I can help you get the price that you're looking for. 
But in order to do that, it's very important that I see your home so I can better sell it to my client. It's really easy. You know, does, does that make sense to you? I always ask, hey, does that make sense? Yes. Uh, that one line about, I know I can help you get the price you're looking for. That could be, yeah, you want to be careful when you use that one because they may be overpriced. Way overpriced. Right, right. So again, the, the script is built in a way that is going to help you get in the door. I don't try to badger people on the phone about their price, even if I know they're overpriced, because I'm just gonna lose the sale right then and there, right? Because people have their own uh, interpretation of how they wanna handle their business. So I'm not here to argue that, nor am I here to argue the price. And I never do, right? I just, I'll slide the CMA in front of them and I'll go over house by house, say this one sold at X, this one sold at Y, this one sold at C, and this one's pending for this amount, right? And let's see how these compare to your home. Now, based on what you've seen, what do you think the price of your home should be? And then they have no logical argument to say if they're overpriced, then they start realizing it starts dawning on them. But the problem is not enough agents take the time to educate the clients on what's going on. They just go out there like war and try to fight it. Oh, you're overpriced, you'll never get this house sold and you blow it right then and there. Uh, and that's the, the biggest problem is you're trying to convince somebody that doesn't want to be convinced about the way they should do things to begin with, right? You need to just, again, that's where the relationship really comes in handy, I just help them, right? I present the facts and I help them discover what it is that they should be looking for. That's really what it comes down to with these resale sale managers, okay? Um, any questions on that right now as far as setting up the appointment? You guys good? Yeah. Let me check uh, Let me check Facebook real quick. Um, you? Just to make sure, oh, you got it? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I just wanna make sure nobody had a question in here. Okay, they're good so far. Okay, so that is the intro part, okay? So most of the time what you, what'll happen is you'll get to, to preview the house, they'll say, hey, you know, I'm not interested in listing, but here's what I want, here's what I'm looking for, you know, if you can help me get somebody, great, if not, that's okay too. And that's fine with us. What I, tr I, what I tend to do is I get all, all the information that I need as far as contact info, so obviously email, phone number, and then I plug them into that CRM that Kevin's been training you on. And that has its own set of sequence, so follow-ups every week with emails that they're getting dripped on, value-driven emails, right? That are saying, hey, here's some tips on how to sell your house, here's some tips to maximize your profit, curve appeal, the whole nine. Uh, but then, every week I'm following up with, with my own set of follow up via call. So I'll give them an update on the market. Hey, here's what's going on in your neighborhood since the last time we met, here's some of the houses that have sold, here's what's come on the market, and here's how that's affecting or influence, influencing your price, okay? And then we, we just take the conversation from there. Is there anything else? How's this week been? Have you been getting any showings, any offers, any contracts? Anything I can help you with? And I always say to them, hey, if you happen to get an offer, call me. I won't charge you a dime. I just wanna make sure you have the right paperwork. I, I'll even give them sales contracts that we as realtors use. Again, introducing value into the relationship because most of these agents, like I've told you guys, are just going out there trying to pick up listings. They're not introducing value into the relationship. That's not gonna, that's not gonna get you any deals, right? You, you need to give the person a reason to come and give you the listing or do business with you as opposed to the other Joe Schmo that's trying to call them, right? So always think value first. What can I give this person in order to earn, earn their business? So a lot of the things they're missing right off the bat, photography, right? So I'll analyze, like I showed you guys when I was showing you the for sale by owner, they have awful pictures. They'll just take out their iPhone and take a couple pictures. Half the time they're in their pictures or they have their dog or their family member in their picture. So I'll say, hey, listen, I have professional photographers. I can hook you up with one of them. They'll give you the same rate that they gave me. Um, and, and, and that way you'll have a much better presentation right off the bat. They will appreciate that. A lot of the people will say, hey, I really appreciate that. Or, and by the way, if you want to do a listing, I pay for that, right? I'll tell them, I'll, I'll pay the 200 bucks or 150 or whatever it is. You don't have to take care of any of that, right? You're putting everything on autopilot and I'm taking care of the whole process. So I'm selling them all along the way. And they're going to say no a bunch of times. So usually about the eighth time that I get a no, I start getting yeses, right? So I, I usually used to count them off. Like I know the, by the eighth follow-up, I'm already starting to make some traction. And you do this enough, right? If you're seeing these for sale by owners, uh, you know, I used to see four to five every week consistently. I would get five to six uh, listings every month or every 45 days. I'd pop a new one, pop a new one, keep popping new ones, the more I went on appointments. What's your average timeline from first contact to listing? Depends on motivation, but I found when I was tracking it, it was about 24 days. So I was sitting, I, I met somebody about three and a half weeks later, I'd have them under contract as a, as a listing. Sometimes faster, sometimes, I mean, I've had, uh, Fizbos that I've met a year ago that still haven't been able to sell their house and I've, I've given them so much value up to that point that they're almost forced to go with me. They have nowhere else to look because everybody else has given up by now but they're still getting my emails and I'm still checking in on them. That's the whole point is the relationship building. Uh, and again, guys, you don't 
you know, the for sale buyer is just an easy barrier, barrier to entry. All it takes is a phone call and an appointment, right? But you, you're not three years from now, four years from now, when you've already built your book of business, you already have the referrals coming in, you already have people asking you to do business with you, your phone's ringing, not you having to do it the other way around, you won't have to do this anymore, right? This is just very easy tactics to set up your business right away and start making connections. The number one thing about being in real estate is you have to just make connections. Every day you have to meet somebody new that can further your business in some way, shape, or form, right? Whether it's a buyer, seller, investor, even if it's just a renter, forget it. At least it's somebody that in the future could uh, could help build up your business and, and bring you more business, right? The referrals become really important in real estate. That's the lifeblood, in my opinion, because that's where listings are referrals, okay? Um, there's a couple other scripts in here that you'll see like alternative scripts, uh, you know, the system, what to say at the preview appointment, a few crit critical questions to ask. These I always ask, right? This, this is when I'm in the appointment. You know, realistically, how long will you try to sell this home on your own before your list, right? So then I get a timeline and a level of motivation at them. So I say, you know, realistically, what's your goal, right? When do you need to be out of this house by? What, what is motivating you to get out of here? What's your next stop? Like, where are you going to next? And I can gauge their motivation. If they tell me, hey, I need to move my into a different school district. I, want, I really want to get my kid into this school, but I can't. You know, the, the school buses don't come down this way and I'm not in the right district and I can't take them to school every day, so we need to move into a new community or a new neighborhood. That's one of the biggest motivators. Uh, there's a few other ones too, like you know, the, some of the bad ones like divorce. You know, people are getting divorced or they're very motivated to get rid of that asset and capitalize on, on the profit there. Um, so that'll that'll obviously induce some motivation there as well. Hey, what's up guys? How are you? Hey Tim, hey. what's going on? Have a seat. Hi. How are you? Have a seat Hi. anywhere you like, okay? What's up, Tim? Um, so again, always try to find those motivating factors. So by asking the right questions, what is your timeline? Where do you need to be in six months? You know, what is the new place that you're looking at? Are you looking to rent again? Uh, rent until you find something that you want to buy, or are you looking to buy right off the bat? Can you buy without selling this house, or do you need to sell this house first before you buy? Right. Those are extremely important questions to ask because then you are inducing motivation, right? And you're gauging whether this lead is motivated and somebody that you're gonna be able to do business with in the next 30 days, or if this is more of a long-term play that's gonna take you 90 days plus to really be able to close. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, so then, you know, you build a scenario, and, and this is a script by Tom Ferry, which who is a real estate coach. You guys can Google him. I've used him a lot in the past. But he's, he uses uh, what he calls drama. Uh, so he'll ask, Mrs. Seller, you mentioned on the phone, you tried for 30 days, Clear you want to move to San Fran right away. You've got a couple kids, a husband, a full-time job. I mean, selling on your own is a full-time job in itself. Based on that, realistically, how long are you going to try to sell this on your own? And they, that's kind of what I spoke to you about earlier, right? People have a full-time job. They have kids. They have other responsibilities. They have, they have to take them to soccer practice. They have their own life that they want to live. They really don't have time to sell their own house, right? And they're just hoping and praying. They just threw something up on Zillow, hoping that a buyer comes and gives them, writes them a nice check for exactly what they're asking for. That's not reality. And our job is to educate them, not in that manner, right? But you really, that's the point you're trying to get across. That's not gonna happen um, in the timeline that you're hoping for, especially if you need to be somewhere uh, at a certain time, okay? So these are some of the clinchers when you're there and when you're at the appointment. And by the way, for those of you that just came in, we're talking about for sale by owners and how to close them pro properly, okay? Um, I really appreciate you having me over. My intention was just to look at the home. Now that I'm here, I have to say I'm 100% confident that I can sell your house. If I can sell your home for the price you want in the time frame you need and do all the work for you or say eliminate the hassle, right? Because it is a hassle for them. Would you consider listing this home with me this week, right? This question is critical to ask before you leave. I always ask that question. No matter how the appointment had gone, no matter what they said to me, I always said, listen, if there's ever a point in time where you need to list, what needs to happen in order for you to get there, right? If I can get you the price you're looking for, if I can get you into your new home within the next six months and all these goals that you're trying to achieve, right? would you be willing to sign a listing agreement, right? They can say no, that's okay, right? In fact, most of them do say no, I, I'm not sure, right? They'll deflect the question. It's a lot harder for them to say eh, no right off the bat in front of you than it would be on the phone, because guess what? On the phone, they could just click, right? Hang up on you. But in real life, they're like, oh God, this guy, you know, he's good, I really like him, but I'm not ready to do this yet. I told my husband I won't do it, so no, right? I don't want to do it yet. That's okay, we're just trying to build the, the scenario there, but it's still very important to ask that question. This is a great, uh, answer to get. I'm oh, sorry, great question to ask. Um, so a another uh, critical question here that this is stating, uh, if they do say yes, set the appointment and come back for a listing presentation, more than often, obviously, they're, they're going to say, I don't think you can give me the price I want if you add on your commission. And this is a great answer to get. Why, right? And then you could say, I'm not, I'm not sure I can either, right? I'm, 
I'll be honest with you, but let me go do my research right now that I've seen the homeless, get back tomorrow around five uh, for 15 minutes and let's see if we can make the numbers work, okay? This is one strategy, okay? I typically like to have all my information up front, so I, I know already that the numbers won't or will work, right? I don't wanna have to say, oh, let me come back tomorrow and find out, I wanna already know. That's just how I felt comfortable. Again, this is at the beginning of the class, I told you guys, find what works for you. If something doesn't work for you, don't force it upon your, your uh, repertoire or your skills there, just do something that works for you. For this particular person that wrote the script, it, it, I can see why they'd wanna come back, you wanna set up more appointments and build more rapport, but I like having my information up front. So I can right away say, hey, I know the numbers will work. I've done research on your market. I know that you know, 85% of the time people are getting, uh, they're getting much less than what they were expecting on their house, and that includes my commission right then and there. So I know I can make this work, yes. And there'll be something I wanna add to that. So talking about having your information, when you get there up front to the appointment, get bare bones what you need before you make that phone call, but maximize the number of calls you can make to these bizbos. Because if you're gonna sit there and you're gonna do all your market research, you're gonna do all your property research, before you get to that appointment, you're gonna find yourself spending 30 minutes to an hour between phone calls. That's not the way you wanna spend your day. You wanna spend your days just calling those people, trying to get those appointments. Uh, one of the biggest things that I do uh, when I was calling Fizbo's was I was actually going on to Zillow and I would just click next, click next. I would just continue to click through and just call them regardless of how long they've been on market, regardless of where the property was. I mean, you know, keeping in mind that there's certain things that we can't sell that are sold by associate, uh, association, but like manufactured homes or like mobile homes. You can sell manufactured. Some, some of them, um, the ones that don't own the land, they can't sell because that's, right. that's a dealership, that's a trailer. Yeah, so items like that, you know, I mean, just, just keep that in mind, but honestly, just look through, just, just click on that home in Zillow, just call that phone number right away, and then go on to the next one. Because if you start doing that, you're going to find yourself losing out on 10 to 20 calls a day. Uh, I think a target number, what do you think, maybe 20 to 30 Fizbo calls a day? You know, I, I was a little different when I when I did my my prospecting. I wouldn't actually try to hit a call number. I would try to hit an appointment number. So I wouldn't stop. If it took me 10 calls to get two appointments, then I was done, right? But if it took me 100, then, then I was done when I got the two. So it really is however it took me. Most of the time, it really only took me about out of the people that picked up, you know, five or six conversations, right? Because I, at, at some point you'll start developing better skills and you'll be able to handle what's called an objection, right? So when people say, no, not interested in seeing a realtor, so at the beginning you're gonna tend to say, oh, okay, sorry to bother you and hang up, right? But once you develop more confidence, you understand what you're talking about and you've been on quite a few of these, then you can overcome that objection like I was telling you before, you, there's certain things that you can say to, uh, to flip the script there and help them uh, realize that they, they, yeah, they need to see you, right? And, and completely change their mind. That's the experience you guys know a lot more than I have. So. No, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's gonna take experience. That's the thing is you don't gain experience unless you do it, right? So you, it starts by doing it. So yes, you're gonna turn, get turned down a lot. You're gonna have some awkward conversations. You may have some awkward appointments, but at the end of the day, it's all in the name of progress and you're just trying to get through and obviously build your career. So that shouldn't matter as much as, you know, what your goals are, right? Which is. Two things really important that he mentioned there. Uh, one that I talk about, I do a whole course on time management. Um, I believe that's coming up next week. I'll check the schedule, but it's uh, it's called 90 60s. So I'll give you a brief overview of 90. You spend 90 minutes doing income producing activities. So researching on Zillow and trying to figure out whether what they're asking for is actually comparable to what the market yields, that's not income producing, right? That's still an essential activity, but that's considered admin time, okay? Your 90, your income producing is phone calls, right? Making more calls, trying to set up more appointments, conducting the appointments, so going in person and meeting with these sellers, uh, or writing contracts. That's all income producing, all three of those activities. Um, again, admin, responding to emails, right? Uh, answering text messages, trying to do market research and data, although very important, not income producing. So I have, a, again, a whole course I teach called time management uh, to effectively produce the income results that you're looking for that you need to be very diligent about that. And in fact, you you run that. Every day I, I train him to do the 90-60. So he knows that during his 90s, it's uninterrupted appointment setting or negotiating contracts or uh, you know physically trying to set up an appointment with somebody else. Uh, and then during his 60s, he does all the admin times. He spends time here with you guys. He does the trainings, whatever else he, uh, he needs to do. Yep. All the emails and the follow-ups, okay? Yep. Talk a little bit about Zillow. I just wanted to pull it up here. I know I've gone over this before and there's a bunch of training on Ways by Waterfront about how to do this, but just quickly, if you go on Zillow.com, pull up uh, Naples, Florida, and make sure you unclick 
up here where it says listing type, oops, sorry, up here where it says listing type, make sure you unclick by agent and foreclosures, new construction, all that, just leave the only one by owner. And you can see in this map, there's 188 homes for sale. Um, that's the result right up there. So there's 188 FISBOs between, I mean, we're not even all the way in North Naples. This is Vanderbilt Beach Road, right? Naples Park, all the way down to not even Marco Island. So if I zoomed out even further, there's probably even more, okay? But I'm just, in this general area, drivable by, you know, within 30 minutes, you have 188 homes that you can hit, okay? And these change every single day. There's new ones, the other ones go off the market. Um, so there's there's never the excuse that there's not enough because there's plenty. And this is just one strategy that we're talking about here. So um, so again, but when you go home tonight, the whole point of these trainings are action-based, right? So I can teach you up here to a blue in the face or make you watch all the videos that you can, but if you don't actually implement these things, then nothing's gonna happen, nothing's gonna change for you, okay? So go in there, start looking at some of these. Again, just a brief overview. If you just simply click on one of these, it's gonna pull up this screen right here. It's a $90,000 little trailer, but that's okay. Um, the point that I'm trying to make here is their contact information is always down here where it says property owner, okay? So that's 614 number, that's the homeowner for the person that posted this up for sale by owner on Zillow, okay? And that's somebody that you can contact today and run the script by them. So just practice the script, practice it in front of you, record it. That means anything, but you get a 10% commission on that. What's that? You can get a 10% commission on it. You can get whatever commission. Yeah, whatever you want. Whatever so you mean, want, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, it's gonna be a good afternoon sale if you just wanted to go do something. Sure, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, most people know standard is six, but if for some reason you can convince somebody to pay you 10, great. I owned a mobile home park, so I understood. Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah, it depends. You gotta be careful with that. Not all mobile, again, if, if it doesn't, if you don't own the land, then it's considered a car sale. And we're right. not licensed to sell cars, right? Right. But you can still put a deal together and have somebody yeah. pay you. Right. That's outside of a real estate transaction. They have to actually own the land. So uh, be careful. I actually saw ended up selling the land and made more money on the land than I made on the Well, the park. thing is, some t if you sell the land, great, if you can do that, but just understand that sometimes these trailer park communities will own the land and they'll lease it to the trailers, right? right? So that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. uh, and they wouldn't sell you the land. But if you're in a scenario where it's a land lease and they're willing to sell the land with it, then yes, you can make a lot more commission than just 6%, absolutely. It just had to be the first one you pulled out. So yeah, it's funny how I just clicked on that one. But again, just an example to show you where you can find the phone number. And all of these are that way, okay? So make sure you, again, just try it. Even if it, it's awkward, even if you don't know what you're saying, just give it a shot, see how it goes. See if you, at the moment you set up an appointment, let me or Kevin know and we'll find a mentor to go with you. Otherwise, we'll go on the appointment ourselves with you, okay? That's really important uh, that you guys have that level of confidence that you know somebody's gonna come with you. And personal experience, guys, um, would you just click on another listing real quick? Sure. Just Any? for, and. You know what, get down here. Nice. Oh wait, there's one in Royal Harbor. Okay, so personal experience, would you just scroll down just a little bit? Yes. Right there. Okay, just so you guys know, so if you call somebody, you leave them a voicemail, Kyle talked about this too on his, uh, on his training, make sure you fill this out, click that. Don't just leave it here, because you're gonna get phone calls from other reasons. Oh, okay, yeah, good point. So, just throwing that out there, guys. So, yeah, sometimes you'll see, like, the other one, you couldn't see that, but this one is a little different. So, you see how there's these three agents right here? These are people that are paying Zillow to be on these advertisements, okay? So, obviously, you don't want to call them. Those are agents. They don't have the listing. They just pay to be there. Now, what you want to make sure is you're clicking on property owner and that you're calling this person. That way, sometimes they don't, they forget to put their number in, so I have to shoot them an email, but you have to make sure it's clicked off on that person, not that you're sending the email to... You know, Mary Catherine White or Chris or two selling sisters. Okay, just make sure that you're sending it to the actual owners. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of phone call from these people. So yeah, it's, it's just, I've made that mistake too. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, it kind of comes with the territory. But at the same time, yeah, just make sure you're, you know, what you're doing there. But the, again, another great example. This is down in my neck of the woods, uh, in Royal Harbor Oyster Bay. Uh, great area. This is a vacant listing. Okay, so these are cool. Uh, because what I usually, uh, on the follow-up section um, of this, what I tend to do, and this leads right into a close too, is I'll say, hey, listen, let me put my money where my mouth is. I will give you a free open house. I'll do a mega, and I talked about this in the last training I did with you guys. Um, I will completely put a, a mega open house together for you, no attach, no strings attached, no agreements, no nothing in writing. We'll just do a deal. I'll go ahead and do the open house. And you can see how, how many people I'm able to get, right? It's vacant, so it doesn't matter to them, right? Why would it matter? They don't have to leave, they don't have to go anywhere. They might as well have somebody sitting there. Um, and it works for me because I get to collect buyers, right? And it shows everybody in the neighborhood and obviously the property owner 
that I'm willing to do a good job even without an agreement. So then it's easier to have the conversation and say, hey, I'm willing to do these every single weekend, either myself or somebody from my team. Um, you know, why don't we go ahead and sign a listing agreement? Give me six months. Let me, I'll show you what, how it's done for six months, that's it, or three months. The lowest I would go is three months, but that's another training there for you guys. But again, easy conversations to have, especially when you have a for sale by owner here. And first of all, it's vacant. Second of all, they took awful iPhone pictures, and, and after a while, you'll be able to tell, but look at this one. I mean, he's got, he's in the picture. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that uh, you educate and say, dude, I honestly, People, 99% of buyers these days are starting their search online, right? And how do they see homes online? With pictures. And if they're gonna see a picture of you, they're like, dude, I don't wanna see there's this other inventory that has nice professional photography, everything looks great, uh, and it's set up the way that I want it to be set up. I'm gonna go with that one instead of yours. And you think it, they think it's silly, like why would they care? And it's marketing, right? That's how it works. That's a, especially millennial buyers, they don't wanna see you in the, in the picture there. They want a really nice photography that somebody know, actually spent the time and paid for or edited it. So obviously this this would be a, a deterring one, instrument there for them. One question. Yes. How much is it cost? What does the photographer cost to come out? You know, it, all photographers are different. I got a couple guys that I use that'll charge me as little as a hundred bucks for something like this because it's small. It's only a thousand square feet. So hundred to five hundred would be a good number. Five hundred would be for your bigger uh, homes, like three thousand, four thousand, five thousand square foot homes. They charge usually for square footage, and then if you get crazy and you want to do like some drone pictures or some video. They obviously charge more for that too, but the most I've ever spent on photography is 550. That included a video and drone for a 3,000 square foot home. So that it, it's not awful. Uh, and I looked at it as an, and first of all, you can write that off on your taxes. And second of all, it was an investment for me because I put the video on my YouTube channel, and then I will show other physicals. Hey, these are the kind of marketing that I'm doing for for sale owners, just like right, you, nice. right? No, no strings attached. I'm willing to do this for you. Um, again, another selling point there. But that you guys can see how there's multiple ways of the follow-up process leading to a close if you simply offer some value. It's, it's the easiest one to do, especially on a vacant one, like I already said, is a mega open house. And you can offer that to them in person. I recommend that one. I usually do it when I'm meeting with them. Or as a follow-up call, like, hey, let me just do a quick open house for you. No strings attached. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how it's, uh, how I can do a, a good job for you guys. And then if you know, we're gonna have a conversation after that one, then we can based on the results, right? Uh, no re or results driven incentives is what I call them. So you want to no. make sure that you're one more question. People. Yep. I don't think I give a free open house to that house. You when you go on a maybe a little bit higher number. I would do it for that one. Uh, you know why? Because that community is open. There's no gates and it, it's highly. There's a lot of traffic in there because of Sandpiper Road. Right. A okay. lot of cars go out there every day, especially by 41 too. So that's a great place. So even if I I might meet buyers that are in a higher price range right. because that area is. The average sales price in Royal Harbor Warriors survey, depending on, you know, if you look at the condos, is about half a million bucks, and the single family homes are well over a million dollars. Okay, so it'd be worth it. So that'd be worth it. Yeah, again, well, that and the experience, too. I mean, that's going to be something that's key for you guys here, especially those of you that are brand new, is you want to get some experience under your belt, too. Okay? I'm going to navigate away from for sale by owners now, but any other questions in regards to uh, that section that we, that we went over there? Can you send me that? Uh, your Spiel, do I, I just look it up online? And go What's that? The spiel you first showed us. The script. The script? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's on wagebywaterfront.com, but I can send you the link uh, just so you can, can find it. Yeah. Sure, absolutely, no problem. Um, there's a couple powerful FISBO closes that you can use here too. Again, I don't want to spend any more time on FISBOs, but these are great to practice, okay? Um, these are some of the ones that I've used as well in the past that have been successful. Uh, again, a little bit about expired listings, just so you guys know the nature. Uh, of expires is a little bit more difficult. I, I personally, okay, and you guys can navigate this the way that you wanted to, or other agents that I've seen um, have waited until they got some experience to get for sale by owners or doing some open houses because expires is somebody that's already given a listing to somebody, it didn't work for whatever reason, so they're already a little turned off. They're already like, okay, well, you know, what are you going to do that the other agent didn't do, right? So, how do you answer that question as a brand new agent? It's a lot more difficult especially with no experience, right? So you wanna make sure, like, hey, I do mega open houses, I do professional grade photography, videography, aerial photography, get you on the Naples Daily News, email blasts, you know, cold calls to all the other brokers, telling them about your product, the broker open to bring all the brokers in. I mean, there's a lot of things, obviously, that I know now from experience that I didn't know before. So there's a whole proposal that you can put together for these people to help them close. But just the nature is, an expired is a listing 
that expired, right? The terms expired and it went off the MLS and it triggers um, a lot of people buy these services that allow them to call these owners directly as soon as the property expires, right? They get their contact information, they give them a call that same morning, afternoon or night. So a lot of the times when you call them, um, they're gonna say, hey, you're like the 25th person to call me today, okay? <laughs> so you need to have a, a ready, a, a witty, and, a, and a, a, an exciting script ready to go and very confident, otherwise you're gonna lose them right away. When I first started, and again, I don't want to focus too much on what I did. I want to focus more on what you guys can do, uh, but I'm just speaking from experience. I started by texting them. So I had a couple different texting scripts that I tried. So not everybody was texting at the time, more people were calling. Now I think people have caught on with the times and are texting too. So then I started sending video text messages. So I, I would stand in front of my phone and do a little selfie video and say, hey, this is Kyle, sorry to see your property expired. Um, obviously by sending you a video text, you can tell like I'm not every other agent. This is how I do my marketing. Um, I would love to preview your home, see if it's the right fit for some of my buyers. Again, I would funnel them into that same FISBO script, but it was a different approach, right? Because it's an expired script, but it's still my goal was to get in the door. And that's still your goal with these expired calls is to get in front of them, not try to sell them on a new listing over the phone, but to just to get in front of them and have a chance to meet with them, build that relationship, build a rapport, offer value, and then close them, okay? That's one strategy. The strategy that's uh, posted up here that you guys will see in this training is more of a, they call it the surveying strategy, okay? So they'll, they'll call and they'll say, hi, I'm looking for uh, Joe. Uh, this is Kyle with Waterfront Realty Group. I noticed that your home is no longer on the market. I was calling to see, do you still wanna sell it? Okay, and at this point, this is where you're gonna get that, oh, you're the 25th person to call me, or yeah, of course I'm looking to sell it, or no, it's off the market, now looking to sell it, I'm done. Let me ask you a question. And uh, this is maybe more of your statement on this. Yeah. So, when you get to this point where you're going, this is Kyle with Waterfront Realty Group. How much, how much weight do you put on just saying this is Kyle? I'm just curious if you're still interested in selling your home. Yeah. So, the great question. So, every little line counts, and you'll see this as repetition becomes more obvious for you guys. Is I when when I called, I would say, yeah, this, hey, this is Kyle. Is your home still available for sale? And those have expired. Are you still interested in selling it? So I wouldn't throw the realtor line right away, so I, I would save myself a lot of hangups, right? And then people would be curious and ask, hey, are you a realtor? Or yes, it's still for sale, or no, hey, I'm actually just gonna live here for another year, right? Then you can tailor your approach based on what the response is. So yes, that's a good question. You wanna try both, um, but again, I, I don't wanna focus too much on what I did, it's more what you guys can do. Um, if you wanna say right off the top, Waterfront Realty Group, that's fine, otherwise you just keep it to your first name and let the conversation evolve from there, okay? So if it's clear that they're getting a lot of calls, which it will be, uh, use these effective lines. Are you just taking your home off the market? Meaning, are you just, you just don't wanna sell it anymore and, and you're gonna try again next season or when the market changes, right? Are you getting a lot of calls? That's obvious, we've already determined that. These agents are like rats coming out of the word works, aren't they? So you would throw, throw a little humor in there, try to break the ice, that's just an icebreaker. You don't have to say that verbatim, but at the same time, it's like, God, yeah, you know, we're like rats, right? Everybody's just calling you. Now, when it, it expired, but where were we before, right? I always try to throw a little humor in there, kind of dissolves the, uh, the tension a little bit. Can you imagine if you had to work with these people every day like I do? Again, another icebreaker, a silly a little jab in there. Because again, these people are in a very tense environment. Imagine you guys just getting blown up 25 times in one day, right? You'd be pissed by that. By the afternoon, you wouldn't even be picking up your phone anymore, right? So you want to put yourself Again, another sales trick is you want to be empathetic, put their, yourself in their mindset, and then shift the gear a little bit and try to crack a joke or, or throw some humor in there to, to, to solve the tension. That's the most important part. Uh, as soon as this pulls back up, I'll read the next line. There we go. Um, if you sold this home, where would you be going to next? Again, some of those qualifying questions that I asked Fizbo's, same thing. It's just, there's the same thing. There's the person trying to sell their house, right? It's just a matter of how you approach them. Um, so again, you're, you're gauging motivation. Where do you need to go? Where do you need to be? Are you moving out of state, out of the city, out of the district? Where do you need to be? What is your time frame to be moved? <laughs> and it, there's parentheses there that says, ouch, because they wanted to be gone like yesterday, but they're still, you know, they're not even on the market anymore, right? Why don't you think, why do you think that your home did not sell? That's an important one. So I always, and that's like a loaded question, right? Because then they're gonna have, oh, my realtor sucked, or you know that I needed this and we didn't get that, the market, this, and they're gonna use everything that they can. So I usually try to be very empathetic on that question right there. Um, and then it, I, I, I love this one because it gives me uh, some reasoning behind why they didn't like their last agent or why they actually did, right? How did you pick the last agent? That obviously didn't qualify to sell your home, but I still wanna know. 
How did you pick them? What did you like about them? What didn't you like about them? It's important because I like to hit on the stuff that they loved, right? Provide more of that. And the stuff that they didn't like, I want to make sure I do better than the last guy, right? So it's very important. So when people say, oh, you know, the last agent, he, uh, he didn't know too much about online marketing, right? So I felt like we weren't getting enough traction online on Zillow or on, on the internet, on Google or whatever. I say, hey, you know, our team actually, we have a division that specializes on online advertisement, right? We, we lead generate online, so that therefore we're providing a lot of advertisement online to expose your home as much as possible. So we have a whole team set up right there. We do all email marketing, anything you could think digitally with Facebook, whatever you throw in there is okay with me as long as, again, you're providing value and showing them that, that we're different from that last guy because he didn't know how to be an online marketer, right? The only reason a home does not sell in today's market is because of exposure. Did you know that? Most people say, no, I thought it was price. Well, it's kind of both. Okay, exposure is very important because if nobody knows about something, then why would they ask about it, right? If I don't know your home is for sale, a lot of people say, hey, where were you when my home was on the market? Well, I, I didn't even know it was for sale. That's how good of a job your last realtor was doing, right? I'll throw a little job at them. Again, just kind of break the ice. You know, you don't have to say that at the beginning. I've, now it comes with confidence. I, I, I allow myself to say that, but in the past it would have been a little awkward because obviously I was brand new. Um, so yes, it's exposure, it's pricing, but at the same time, you wanna make sure you get as many eyeballs on the listing as possible. Uh, if I can show you how to upgrade your exposure to the market and get your home sold, would that be of interest to you? Okay, that's broad, again, loaded question. Um, so you sit back and see how they answer that. If they say yes, then set up the appointment. If they say, well, you know, no, I'm getting too many of these realtors, blah, 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 tailor your approach. There's some objection handlers down here that'll help you in the event that you run into some objections and some different dialogues as well. Oh, I'm sorry, the objection handle is right. Um, because you will be getting a lot of objections. If you choose to go after expires, you're gonna get a ton of objections, okay? We're taking the home off the market. I hear what you're saying. And if yesterday I brought you an offer you liked, you were moving, right? So that, like, if I would've brought you an offer last week when you were on the market, you would've moved on if it would've been acceptable to you. So in that case, let's just meet for 15 minutes when you see my aggressive proof of proven plan. If it makes sense, we sell. If it doesn't, it was just 15 minutes, what do you have to lose? Nothing, right? Very important question to, to throw at them there. We've already chosen another agent or friend in the business, okay? I can appreciate that. Have you signed an agreement with them yet? If they did, the conversation is over, okay? We can no, no longer be talking to that person ethically. But if they say no, let me ask you a question. After X amount of months on the market and knowing what you know now, right? You wish you wouldn't know that before, but what you know now, wouldn't it be worth just 15 minutes? 15 minutes to hear a different opinion and a fresh new approach. It only takes 15 minutes. Are you free this afternoon? I live close by. My office is right down the street, depending on where you're talking to them, obviously. I'll be there this afternoon on another appointment. Can I just swing by for 15 minutes and meet you? Okay? We're going to try it on our own for a while. Again, this is a for sale by owner approach. I already loaded you guys with, with objections for that. But again, you can use this one. I appreciate that. Let me ask you a question. If, you, if I could sell your home in the next 30 days and save you the time, would it be worth just 15 minutes, again, just to hear me out, right? What is worth more to you, the time or the money element? Depending on who you're talking to, you're gonna get a variety of different answers on that question. Um, yeah, expired in the luxury market works really well because people, usually when you have a multi-million dollar home, you have a very knowledgeable homeowner that values his time a lot more than he does an extra percentage point of commission. So you can talk and speak the same language. It's a lot easier. A lot of people get intimidated with a seven-figure price point, eight-figure price point. It's actually easier because these people are already, most of the time, are already business owners, executives, people that understand how time relative to money works. And that's what we're trying to do is save them time, take the whole process off their hands so they can go focus on what they're good at, like running their company uh, or being CEO of their own business, whatever the case may be there, okay? Um, you all agents are the same. I, I get that a lot. I hear you and actually Waterfront Realty in Naples, Florida sells X amount of times more homes than our competition. Would it be worth it? Just 15 minutes to hear exactly how we could do it with your home or my team or I personally. Nobody will spend more time than I will. You know, I, I, I used to use this a lot in the beginning because I didn't have a lot of business. I would just say to people, I only focus on three to four clients at a time because I feel like that's the most of my time that I can give. To, to absolutely make sure that I'm doing a good job for you and to make sure that you feel like you have my undivided attention at all times. If I was out there, you know, closing 100 deals a year, how, do you, how would you possibly think that I'd have time to sell your home, right? So when people say, oh, well, this, this lady over here has 80 listings, you only have 
one or three or you don't have any. And I'll say I, I focus on a very few amount of agents that, or clients at a time, right? That's just my the way I do business. I find that to be more effective. My closing ratio is higher, not by volume, but by quality instead, right? That's another good objection handler that you guys can use, okay? And then my favorite, where were you when my home was on the market, right? Why didn't you show when my home was on the market? Great question. I was busy fulfilling the promises I made to my sellers to show, market, and sell their homes, the ones that I have contracts with, right? Why would I be chasing other listings that I don't have contracts with when I have my sellers that I've already committed myself to to sell their home and spend the most time so I'm trying to sell their home? I didn't even know your home was on the market until today when the agreement expired. That's pretty scary, right? That's exactly why we should get together. Uh, I specialize in selling homes that other agents didn't. And we have a, we actually have, a, that says 19, but we have a 50 point marketing plan that I'll share with you guys. I know you'll be impressed with what time can we get together to go over it, okay? Um, again, those are some objection handlers that you can use there. Uh, that I, You will get a lot of objections. Understand that, know that going in, that it's not gonna be a walk in the park and you're just gonna be able to pick up a listing left, left and right. Eventually, it will become that way because you'll be so confident that your closing ratio is gonna be through the roof. At the beginning, it'll be a little bit more difficult as you start maneuvering yourself into this new career that you've chosen to take on, okay? so. Just understand that knowing that up front is gonna allow you to, to not get worn down when people, you get a lot of no's and people, it's almost like you defeat yourself, right? After a while you're like, oh my God, man, like nobody wants to do anything. And then you start making up excuses in your head as to why you shouldn't do it, why you shouldn't make any more calls and go on more appointments. Just, and then that one comes along and that one sale or that one listing, that one closing makes everything better, right? So we wanna make sure we focus on that latter part of that argument as opposed to the former part, which is just getting all the no's. Get all the no's out of the way, Focus on the yes, there'll be less yeses, but eventually there's gonna be a lot more, okay? And that's gonna come through experience, coming to the trainings and taking action after these trainings. Go make some of these calls, they're not hard, okay? I suggest starting with the for sale by owners. But if you guys are feeling brave and wanna do some expired, I'll give you some expired leads. We get how many expired leads a day? 20, 30? Probably even more sometimes, depending yeah. on the day. Sometimes you know, we get 50. Yeah, um, so there's plenty to call there. So if you want to, you know, try a few for sale by owners this week, and maybe next week we'll try some expireds. And you guys, I got you covered on the second part, right? I, I am guaranteeing that somebody, even if it has to be me, will go on the appointment with you. Um, all you have to do is set up the appointment. That's it. So first of all, expired, open houses. Uh, you know, if you have buyers in your sphere of influence, I know we've been talking individually about a few buyers that you guys have. We can help you with those as well. Uh, but just set the appointment. That's all it takes. Do you guys have? I ran a little over, but I have some time if you guys wanna uh, openly talk or discuss anything that you have going on or any questions on the training right now. I'll speak real quickly. Sure. Uh, one of the biggest things, and for everybody on Facebook Live, every Tuesday, guys, nine o'clock, we do live call sessions where you are provided leads, where you receive leads, where you can call the leads. I will call with you. I do this all the time, all day long. I make phone calls, I call the buyers, I call expires, I call Fizbo's, I make all those calls. I hear no 100 times a day, guys. I don't mind it. So if you hear one no to two no's, that's perfect. You know why? Because it means you're moving forward. So come Tuesday mornings, come at nine o'clock, let me give you leads that you can work on, especially the expires. Fizbo's, I'll show you how to farm them. But even nice enough is that they're in our system too. So make sure you come. Take the leads, I want to give them to you. I can't call 1,200 people by myself. You need to come and help me do this. I want to give you guys leads. Please, <laughs> please come. It's true, he's got a bunch of leads to, to follow up on. So every Tuesday, again, from 9 to 11, that was this morning, um, he's doing cold call sessions and he's bringing people on. So if you guys wanna, if you have a, uh, if you need more leads, we have an abundance of leads, okay? So whether it's from sale by owner or the, his own buyer leads that he's working on, Happy to share them with you guys, especially if you're in the mentorship program. That's kind of what the value add for the mentorship program is, is yep. you get leads. Um, as long as you guys are willing to put in the work, we'll give you all the leads that you can handle, mm -hmm. right? Yes, cool. for sure, for sure. Tim, how's it going, man? Anything Anything new going on? No? Just counting on the living, days. Living the, yeah. yeah, counting on counting the days, you yeah. Know it, you know it. Tim's going full time in, uh, when is it? Uh, Monday, this coming Monday. This Oh, really? Okay, great, yeah. This coming Monday, he's going full time. Full turkey. Good for you. <laughs> so I got a question for you. Let's say going back to the fish books. Mm -hmm. uh, you get uh, you get a meeting with the uh, owner, and he's not ready. There's no way to convert him to a listing yet. Mm -hmm. So he says, "I want to see what you can do. Can you find me? Can you bring some people through?" 
what's the what's the best avenue to try and generate interest to get people in there? Well, besides for an open house. Yeah, um, besides that. Do you have any suggestions, or do you want um, to go? I think you know one thing that I would do is you know considering if you know in my place where if, if I were to do this, uh, I would first start talking to other agents, just see if they know anybody, see if they have any clients or anything, because that shows that you know how to use your networking. They, that shows you know how to use your own sphere of influence to bring buyers around. One of the biggest places that I use when I talk to Fizbo's, they'll usually ask the question, "Do you have a buyer?" Be honest. Do not lie and say that you have a buyer for yeah. the house. Yeah, I never. I always say, hey, we have an extensive database of buyers. Yeah. You know, I'll speak yeah. about Kevin's lead generation, or I'll talk about what my own team is doing, or what the brokerage has been working on. But if the the question is, do you specifically have a re ready, willing, and able buyer today, right now? If I don't, I will say no. I do not at this moment in time. But I will. This is my full time job. Mm -hmm. You so could, I don't could you put it. like a posting on our uh, private? Oh sure, yeah. Page. Put it. Yeah. Put it in there. And. I would. Uh, I wanted to ask you this: mm -hmm. uh, where I came from, you could not use somebody else's MLS pictures. It was a, a copyright protection deal. You so mean when, would, when they were active, or yeah, anytime, okay? Anytime. So, so here we have what's called broker reciprocity. I don't know how it is in other markets, but um, broker reciprocity allows me to take uh, a listing from John R. Wood or Downing Friar competitor and share it out through my own channel. Um, not as my own, but as a listing that I'm advertising. Okay. So that that's that's allowed. So do you have to get prior permission? No, to you do not. Oh, no, that's so well, that's what the, the broker reciprocity is for. You get MLS pictures and put them on our page. Okay, so that's that's where I asked you at the beginning if it's if it's an active listing, right? Oh no no. It's okay, so if the previous well, pictures. I'm sorry, it's a Fizbo. Okay, and they had previous pictures from before from another agent. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, unless they have it's it, like written. It, uh, Excessive, you know, a, a, an agreement or something from the previous agent, uh, or or just permission to use those pictures. I would not use them. Okay. I would use my own. Okay. Can I offer some on this? So, what I would do if they're asking about, you know, what you would do and you know how you would get clients to it. There's two ways. First thing, like how I was talking about, previous agent unless they actually own those pictures, take pictures yourself. Say, yeah. I want to market this. Allow me to take some personal pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, or you, you know, they probably don't want to let you go through there with a professional photographer, especially if you didn't get the listing, that's fine. Do your own pictures. Secondly, commissions Inc. This is something that I don't think more than maybe half a percent actually use commissions Inc. You can create a pocket listing in commissions Inc., which means you can put the details of the property into commissions Inc. And then all you gotta say is, hey Kevin, by the way, I just put this listing in there from a FISBO all I need to do is click this little button that says view leads. It, it, it looks at all 2,300 and some odd number of our leads and it puts matches together who's gonna look best at that property. So we can also have that ability. So you just say, oh, just like I said, based on our lead generation program, I can take your information with your prove up, you know, provided consent, I can put it in my system and then we can run it up against all the leads in our system and see who matches up best and see if we can you know, bring them by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great tool. We have so many people in our database that most of the time we have somebody that matches up with, with a listing, provided we have enough information. Yeah. Okay? So um, Kevin and I will put an email together, we'll forward all the links to you guys for the scripts. I'll have this up on our on our YouTube channel, this training, um, and I'll share that with you guys as well. That way if you wanna, you know, for those of you guys that missed the beginning part of it, you can uh, run through it again. You know, we were just talking about for sale bounders, that's the same effect that we were expired. So, um, let's see, did we find out what we have going on tomorrow? Just a few closing thoughts. Let me look at the calendar for training tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's Dalu. Okay, so tomorrow we'll do a little tech training. Okay. okay? So make sure you, it'll be here what again. Time? We'll go over some more technology. I'm sorry. Time. Same time as always. 11, 11 to 12 30. 12. One, one thing I want to plug to you guys too. Um, when you're creating your listing appointments, so you call, let's just say, Fizbo's, for example. Make sure that you go on to the mentorship calendar that is provided for you. You've got Kyle, Matt, and Alicia are all up there, myself there, if needed. I'll, I'll ask you know that you go to those th the three of them first, but make sure you go on that mentorship calendar. If you need to schedule an appointment with a mentor or come with you to a listing appointment, go in there, select Matt or Alicia or Kyle. The time frame is blocked for them. 
you can select the time and then it will alert them to know that it's a listing appointment. We'll do open houses with you guys too. If you have any open houses and you want help running through one, I'm more than happy to do that with you. Um, again, and I've told you guys on the last training we did, I told you some ways to find open houses. The easiest one is just to look at our current inventory waterfronts and talk to some of the agents. The I already, I coach everybody to, to be open to sharing their listings. They're not gonna expect anything in return, so don't worry about that. They're just happy to have somebody post their open house, right? In case they have another one to do or they want to take a Sunday off or whatever it is that they want to do. So that's just fine. I would, I would expect if you guys want to be in particular areas like Old Naples or wherever, just find an agent that specializes in that down here, which we have plenty, um, and, and try to do some other open houses. Is there any, is there a problem if, the, if it's another broker and we host? Uh, yeah, so you would, the, more than likely the other broker won't, they won't let you do that. We've done it before if we have a good relationship with that with that broker, but they have to approve it as much as we have to approve it. Just so again, it'd be easier if you just went with one of ours saying we don't have to go through well, that. Well, London Bay said that I could probably do some. Well, Lo London Bay, the builder? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah, go, yeah, absolutely. Go yeah, crazy. But, I'm actually gonna but be... they're, they're not a broker. No, but I mean, they're a builder. Right. But they'll give me 3%, but they're gonna let me ride on one to next, this Sunday I'm going. It's actually my birthday, but. Oh, happy birthday! But, you, yeah. you can make some money. So <laughs> that's like a great birthday. Actually, right? no. This is just this is just to see how they do it. Okay, so you're not doing an open house this week. I'm doing an open house with another guy. I would, there's no money for me in it, but I get to take all the names. Well, that's that's the point. Is you yeah. get to take all the buyers. Right. So where are you doing your open house this weekend? In Mediterra. Mediterra with Joe? No, with uh, my neighbor. With He's your neighbor? Oh, okay. is it another brokerage? He's a CFO of London Bay. Is it where is the house listed? Yes. Who is it listed with? Uh, Mediterra Real Estate. Mediterra Realty. Mediterra. Okay, Medterra we need Realty. to we need to make sure that we have the proper forms for that. So this is a but, I, but I'm only going. I'm not going as a realtor on this one. I just okay. wanted to observe. Okay, I just want to educate you. Make sure I don't want to get you in trouble because you so get nailed with, with the, the next one. time. I think we will do. So. so the next time we'll go ahead and get all the proper information. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you can shut that up. They like my concession trigger deal, even though I'm not doing it now. Because I'm still what? Oh yeah, I thought that was a.